Good morning or afternoon or evening, you know, whatever time of day that you are finding yourself listening to this. I'm saying good morning because I've been up for a while and I just actually walked in from watching the sunrise and felt like now was a good time to record an intro for today's episode. And I'm actually resharing an episode from this time last year. The thought had crossed my mind coming out of celebrating Resurrection Sunday. And I so love the days and weeks that follow this day. You know, like most of you, we live in the power of all that this day represents in our Christian faith. But there is something about the intentional and intense focus leading up to this day. And, you know, we celebrate you know, really a whole season and then set aside a day to remember and to celebrate. And that always just has me waking up on the following Monday feeling a little extra, you know, a little extra grateful, extra empowered. You know, it's a beautiful time and I'm just so grateful for it. In each seasonal journal, there is an art piece that I've made that correlates with each week's focus. In this year's spring journal, I actually added an image in the front of the journal, and it's the theme of a spring season to me. And what it says is, spring is the season of dead things coming to life. And I would love, I wouldn't plan on this, but as I was sharing that, I would love to give one to you if you would like to have one, if you would like this reminder as well. And I'll put a link in the episode notes that you can download one. And if you have any trouble with that or have any questions, you can either email me at susan at susanbeth.com or you can send me a direct message on Instagram either way. But I would love for you to have it if you would like one. But I went back and I found this particular episode because I remembered the title, which was actually a question that asked, what is dying to spring up out of you? And as I re-listened, I saw how much it connected with last week's episode, which I hadn't even thought about. And so I hope you'll, you'll, if you haven't had a chance to listen to last Thursday's episode, I hope you'll take some time to go back and listen to that one. But the power that Christ provides for you and I is for you and I. God wants to empower and be strong in you. You, the way that he designed and equipped you. God has no interest in empowering you to live your life in the image of someone you admire, but he's committed to empowering you to live the life that he purposed for you when he formed you in your mother's womb, you know, wired with unique intention to image him in the world in this very moment. Now, you might wonder why this message is one that I am so committed to talking about. You know, I mentioned just walking in from watching the sunrise and I had just stepped out of my back door this morning and I was looking up through the tree limbs that my husband just recently trimmed back, not as far back as he would have preferred because he knows that I love to see them hanging down and kind of touching the fence, hanging over the fence, and kind of be able to sway in the breeze. And actually a storm is on the horizon. It is kind of brewing this morning. There's there's no rain yet, but there is wind and There's an energy in the air that's evident. And as I stood there looking out on the light coming through the trees, I couldn't help but notice that the branches, they were moving around quite a bit, almost as if they were just dancing in the wind. And I suddenly found myself desiring to extend my arms, which is not unusual. It happens quite often when I'm out walking or watching a sunrise or sunset. And as I lifted up my arms and I stretched them out, I began to speak out loud praises to God. And I felt so surrounded by the trees, you know, just moving and sweeping around me as if they were expressing their own praise to our Creator. And as I watched them, I was reminded in that moment that these trees were firmly planted. And they were doing exactly what they are designed and created to do in this world. And I felt tears welling up as they are now. 
as I continued worshiping God right there in my backyard and my bare feet, you know, that's the why. Because the way that I feel in every cell in my body is what I desire for you. To love God with all that I am and know and feel that all that I am is completely loved by God. To feel alive and peaceful and delighted in God and his delight in me. To know God and to be known by him. You are so loved, friend. And your creator, God, delights in you. That's why you're here. And that's why I'm here today. And I hope that after listening to this episode that I'm sharing today, that you will take some time to ask and to answer the question that this episode is asking. What is dying to spring up out of you? And the answer might not come immediately. It usually doesn't. But you aren't going to find answers to questions that you don't ask. Hi, friend. I'm Susan Beth, and you are listening to the Susan Beth Podcast, where we talk about living life intentionally and about trusting that the desires you have deep within you are there for a reason. I believe that the creator of the universe put those desires within you and that they are pathways to your purpose. My desire is that this would be a space that encourages you to lean in and to hear the whispers of the divine and that you would be reminded of things that I honestly believe you already know. That you, my friend, are here for a reason. So if you're here for more conversations in that kind of space, welcome. Let's go. The first official day of spring was a chilly one here in North Florida. But the temps are slowly rising as the week is progressing and the signs of spring are being felt and seen. And I know many of you living in other places are still experiencing some polar temps, so hang on, it's coming. Before we jump into today's episode, I wanted to say another big thank you for all of your excitement in getting your She's Awakening journal. And and I'll have a link in the show notes if you haven't ordered one yet and you're interested in grabbing one to walk through this spring with us. And if this is the first time that you're hearing about this and you're like, what journal are you talking about? You can go to SusanBeth.com and you can find some details about the journal there. And I'm also excited to see many of you already downloading the free downloads from the weekly focus found in the journal. So it's just exciting to me to see that you are already enjoying and loving this journal as much as I do. So I have a question that I would love for you to think about as we are heading into this season of spring. And here it is. What is dying to spring up out of you? I can still remember where we were in the house when I had this conversation as a teenager with my mother that I want to share with you today. You know, as a pastor's wife and a mother to five, my mom was always busy taking care of someone or something that needed to be done. And So many of my memories of talking about something with her took place while I followed her around the house or the church office while she was doing what she needed to do. Because if something was on my mind, I pretty much wanted to talk about it. And so I would find a way to have the conversation, no matter how it had to happen. So I remember sharing with her about how I was feeling like I wanted to be a missionary and live in another country. And she listened to me as I shared all of the things that I was thinking. And she then proceeded to help me process those thoughts and those feelings with some questions. Now, I don't remember all that was said that day, but I do remember her talking to me about how sometimes in our sincere desire you know, to serve and to honor God with all of our lives, we choose to do that in a way that appears more noble or sacrificial. So I think we can all admit that We view someone who has left all that is familiar to serve in another country at the top of the sacrifice list. And she encouraged me that day just to continue to pray about this and reminded me, you know, that I could still travel and 
be involved in mission work without having to do it full time. So it made sense to me what she said that day. And I didn't realize it in that moment. But in my heart, instead of becoming a missionary, I now would begin to choose the path of full time ministry in the local church, which I now understand that I just substituted a path that was deemed sacrificial and obedient with another path that represented those same things in my worldview. Hopefully that makes sense. You know, if you grew up in the church world, then you probably get what I'm saying. And for those of you that didn't, I'll clarify by saying phrases like accepting the call or going into the ministry were seen as being totally sold out for God and as totally abandoning any other gifting or profession. It was I felt like it was seen as noble and sacrificing for the call of God on your life. I won't fully go into the story in this episode, but I can remember excitingly sharing with someone about how alive I felt during my time in this particular production that I'd been part of and how I felt that God had been working so powerfully in my life during this time. And my excitement turned to Honestly, feel a little shame as this person that I loved and respected began to warn me that a path in the, that direction would pull me away from the church and into the world. And I can still remember how confused I was after that conversation and just trying to reconcile what I had been experiencing in my walk with the Lord with the shame that I walked away with after that conversation. And I didn't pursue any natural giftings down that path because I felt to walk towards anything in those areas would eventually lead me away from God. And I honestly can't remember a day in my life growing up of not loving God and having this desire to share His love with those around me. And it's interesting because looking back, I unintentionally always did that. You know, a lot or most of my friends from school didn't grow up in Christian homes and I never preached at them or gave them a track. But I did do life with them. And obviously, the Holy Spirit is great at drawing people to him. Because in each of those friendships, even one of my closest being a girl from a Jewish family, they each would begin to ask me questions and wanted to say yes to this life of faith and hope that they saw in me just being me. Now, in no way am I sharing that for you to think of me in some super spiritual way. In fact, it's quite the opposite. I'm sharing this to remind you that when God formed you, he designed and created you in his image. And the best way for the world to see him is through you being who he made you to be. You know, God is not threatened or diminished by who we are. We were his idea or we wouldn't even be here. You know, when when I'm at all watching a beautiful sunrise or a breathtaking sunset, it doesn't take away my adoration of God. In fact, it actually pulls out adoration and praise of his magnificence and skill as our creator. Your life totally surrendered and living powerfully alive in the power of all that he is is a peace-filled, powerful force. So back to that question that I mentioned a few minutes ago. What is dying to spring up out of you? Are there parts of you that you've ignored or pushed down because you didn't fully understand them and they didn't appear significant or really spiritual? Or you just couldn't see how they could bring any glory to God? So those parts of you have laid dormant for so long that they now appear lifeless and dead. I get it. Sometimes it's easier to let dead things be. And sometimes the dead things needed to die. So how do you know? You know, that question can actually go a couple of ways. One way, meaning that there are things that have died that God wants to awaken within you. And the second way is asking, what is dying? to be expressed and released through you. The anxiety and the tension that we can experience in our life so many times, it comes from us living out of alignment with who we were designed to be. We are living our life according to what 
everyone around us is doing instead of being led to live by the still small voice within us, the voice that knows us better than we know ourselves. The personal story that I shared was an example of me choosing the only path that I could see in front of me that made sense to me in honoring God with my whole life. A beautiful path that I have experienced God on and a path that He continues to break out of any box that I might try to put Him in. And the truly beautiful thing is that God is committed to finishing what He started in us when we keep choosing to say yes to all that He has for our lives. Maybe you feel like you've made some choices that have taken you down some paths that now you're having trouble finding your way on. I want to remind you today that you are never too far, that you can't be rescued and restored and found. You are so loved, and His love for you knows no bounds. This is the season that we celebrate dead things awakening to new life. Let's trust the Holy Spirit within us in this season to breathe fresh life over us that we would rise up strong in the beauty and the goodness that He breathed into us from the beginning that will ultimately draw people to Him. I love you guys. And don't forget to check out the link in the show notes or go to the website, susanbeth.com, if you are interested in getting a journal. I truly believe that this journal can be a transformational tool in your life in helping to create the space this spring to hear that still, small, life-changing voice. Love you guys. We'll talk soon. Hey, you. Thanks for listening. And if you would like to connect more, head over to SusanBeth.com and sign up and you will be one of the first to find out about anything new. Plus, there's a special free download available just to say thanks. If something in this episode did speak to you, would you do me a favor and share it with a friend that you think it might resonate with as well? And until next time, keep showing up in the world just as God purposed you to do. Because you being you is exactly what we all need.